Marcus Stroman getting set to make his second start of the series for the Blue Jays up against the Texas Rangers. Their batting order, Delano DeShields leads off, followed by Shinsu Chu. Prince Fielder will bat third today. Adrian Beltre in the cleanup spot. Then Mitch Moreland, Josh Hamilton hits sixth. Bottom of the order, Elvis Andrews, Ruben Odor, and Chris Jimenez, the Rangers catcher. Texas won the first two games here in Toronto, lost the next two at home, having some fun in their dugout prior to game five. Oh, so nervous, right? No, 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 no. Having some fun, getting ready. Marcus Stroman suffered a torn ACL 219 days ago. He told manager John Gibbons he will be back in September. He was what all four of his September starts. Started game two for the Blue Jays, and he gets the ball in game five. His stuff is electric. You'll see a lot of hard sinkers, great movement. He'll have a slider, and it's hard. Mid 90s. First pitch to Delano to Shields is in for strike one. He's a guy who pitches on emotion and energy. He's going to try to tap this big crowd and work quickly. The Rangers, they want to slow him down. Tell you what, he comes out painting. If he's leaving the ball in the corners like that, it's going to be a long afternoon for the Rangers. Six hits in the series for DeShields. Falls behind 0 2. Stroman allowed three runs over the first two innings in game two, then settled down. Retired 14 straight at one point. And the Shields leads off game five with an extra base hit off the wall and left. Wow. Got a hanging breaking ball. When a pitcher throws as hard as he does, and the Shields, the top of the order guy, he's hitting up that fastball. He gets the bat head out, just hanger, and got out in front of it and put enough on it. He thought the ball might get out, and I did two off the bat. You know, game two, the curveball was the best pitch that Stroman had that day. Obviously, not a quality one right there. The best thing about Stroman is he has many pitches to go to. A leadoff double for DeShields. Here's Chu, who had three hits in game four. He takes a call strike, nothing in one. Well, that's, that's his best run right there, A eh? Two seamer coming back, start at the left handed hitter's hips, run back over the plate. Gonna say this is a big at bat for Chu. There it is. Looking to manufacture the run, just get him over. Goins makes the play. The Shields to third. Remember the last time we were back here playing, the Rangers did a great job hitting run, moving runners. That's why they win ball games. And we were talking, Tom, with Bannister about that earlier today. He said it's always important, but scoring first, especially important in a sudden death game. Game fives and the LDSs. Team that scores first, 18 and five. And they've got the infield drawn in with Prince Fielder, who's really been struggling in the RBI column in the postseason. Just two for 16 in the series. He has not driven in a run. The throw comes home. The shield safe. Rangers lead one nothing. Well, that's the explosion of the shields and the slow track that you have on this turf here in Toronto. Bella came hard. He's coming on contact. You can hear the third base coach yelling, go, go, go. And the second hop, if he's able to get there on the first hop, you might have a play. But the second hop, he looks like a running back at going right up the gut on a, a little power play. See you later. Just hard to defend speed. You saw the shield read that play. After that slow hop you talked about, H, it was full jets right there. So Prince Fielder with his first run batted in of the series. His first and his last 94 plate appearances in the postseason. Ball one to Adrian Beltre. And Kenny, who would have thought that Prince Fielder's first RBI would be a worm burner? Right. <laughs> A little hopper in front of the plate. Now Beltre left game one of the third inning due to a back injury. Sat out games two and three. 
returned in game four and had base hits in each of his first two at bats. Yeah, and, and he looked good right there with that swing. He hadn't been able to really let it go. That looked like the first one. Another good swing, Tom. Yeah, I think it's almost like a, an old car in the winter, though. It takes a while to warm up, you know. <laughs> The swings got better during the game in game four. This should be a good matchup for Beltre, such a good low ball hitter against the sinker ball pitcher. A one two from Stroman. Well, Jeff Bannister, the Rangers manager, telling us earlier that Beltre is measurably better than he was on Monday. Played the entire game. Went two for four. Team scoring first has won each of the first four. The visiting team has scored first in all four. Beltre beats the throw. Blue Jays get the lead runner. Now two away. That's a big sign right there. If you want to know how Adrian Beltre is feeling, this should have been a double play ball or would have been a double play ball a couple days ago. Here's a little ISO look at him getting down the line. It's better than it was. But he gutted it out the last four or five steps as he knew what was at stake there with the double play ball. I could hear him creaking all the way up here. <laughs> <laughs> Smiles in the Rangers dugout as French Fielder is congratulated for driving in the game's first run. Here's Mitch Moreland looking for his first hit of the series. Moreland 0 for 10. Well, I bet Stroman would want that. The, the curveball back that he threw to the shields because everything else all the right handed hitters he, well Adrian he busted in hard and was able to keep him off balance with the it's got great movement with the fastball right now how far that ball moved off the plate well he's got a tremendous ability to spin the baseball very few pitchers can throw three different spinning pitches cutter slider curveball. Deep left field Revere and that will do it for the Rangers but they take the early lead to Shields with a leadoff double to left and he scores the game's first run.
Roof closed once again here in Toronto. That's determined by Major League Baseball during the postseason. Blue Jays, a game under 500, 15 and 16, including this series with the roof closed this season. Yeah, kind of strange. I don't know why the difference. Well, they've never had a playoff game here with the roof open. Back in the early 90s, Major League Baseball was really worried that technology might not work if they kept it open. All of a sudden, rain came in. And I think now they worry a little bit about changing conditions if the roof has to be closed in the course of the game. Easiest thing to do, have the same conditions throughout pitch one to the last pitch. It's going to take like 15 minutes for the roof to close if they feel like they need to close it. 54 degrees in Toronto today, 68 inside the dome. Well, they've been throwing a lot of curveballs to Donald, to Hamilton, and that's what Stroman got him in game two. Back foot curveball. Hamilton Jacob. with two hits in game three. That broke an 0 for 31 postseason stretch. Yeah, and both the hits were fastballs. And we were a little bit surprised at the time. Right off pitch. Wow. That, that's, to, that's looking for a fastball to pull a ball into your own dugout on that side. That's how far your bat head's getting out in front. Lead off walk Hamilton heads to first. And that's the first walk allowed by Blue Jays pitching in the last three games. Rangers did not draw a walk in either of the games at home. 75 consecutive plate appearances very rare for a Texas team. Nice job by Hamilton as you said H fouling off the curveball. That was just a sinker by Stroman it didn't move. Well, that's kind of a tribute to the Blue Jays staff that you're around the plate that much. You're not walking guys. May see a hit and run this combination with Hamilton and uh, Elvis Anderson. Uh, fun. There you go. Stroman quickly off the mound. The throw to second. Gets the lead runner, Hamilton. Great play by Stroman. And you got Tulo on the back end. You heard Russell Martin saying 2 2 2. Now we've been talking a lot about the Astro turf and how soft it is, but it's harder than grass. And on a bunt, you got to really deaden the ball. This ball's not a good bunt by Elvis. He's looking for a base hit. He didn't get the bat head out. I don't think that was a sacrifice. I think that was a bunt for a hit. And if you get it down, you get it down. And he kind of did not pull it down the line. He left it out there. Marcus Stroman showed his athletic ability. Great play, great feet, no panic, true throw. When Stroman pitched at Duke on his off days, he played some second base, he played some shortstop. Well, and that's a tribute to the hard work he did rehabbing to get his feet and legs back in condition to, to be able to still move like that. Rudnett Odor at the plate. Well Stroman tore his ACL on March 10th. Fielding a bunt ironically during spring training. That's when he suffered the injury. Underwent reconstructive knee surgery. He vowed to be back in September and not only did he return but he's now making his second start in the postseason. And while he was rehabbing, as Odor falls behind 0 2, Stroman completed his degree at Duke. Uh, I thought it was incredible. I, I was actually at Blue Jays' camp when he got hurt. And I was there like a couple days, and he was getting ready to leave to head back that, to Duke to do his finish schooling. The 0 2, and Odor with a base hit into right field. Andrews to second. Rangers with two on, one out here in the top of the second inning. Well, and that's why I think Elvis Andrews was trying to bunt. Odor's been hot. He's been swinging the bat well, consistent. Here's another ball. Look at that ball run back on you. And that's one of the things that the Rangers have discussed as their game plan is you got to hit the ball and expect it to be a strike. He's got that kind of movement. You look for the ball to be a strike. And you saw the movement. It starts at the hip of the left hand hitter and comes back over the plate. So, I'm sorry Kenny I'm not seeing that real real good movement from Stroman right now. So two on. The number nine hitter Chris Jimenez. The Rangers catcher at the plate one for six in game two. With this combination on the bases don't be surprised you don't see a double steal. That's why they're pinching him in the middle right now the second baseman going because Elvis Andrews will run and Ordor will follow.
Now the advantage of being a guy that can steal bases and be at second base you look at a pitcher's grip. I know a lot of people think you look at the signs and maybe be able to pick up a sequence. You look at the grip once they bring it up in their glove. If you get a breaking ball grip or a change up grip you're off and running. Andrews bluff for one one missing low and away two balls one strike. Well it's something of a medical miracle that this guy is on the mound. You mentioned the torn ACL in spring training. He told John Givens I will see you in September. And Andrew kind of rolled his eyes and said yeah OK. <laughs> he humored him. They did not expect him to be back on the mound anytime this year. He sent out a tweet on March 12th, two days after suffering the injury. It read, the return will be legendary. Well, he can get legendary right here, too. He can get a double play ball and get out of this, and that's the beauty of his stuff. I love his attitude and his personality. I think that's one of the reasons they went with him today, knowing that he the moment's not going to phase him. The 2-2 two -two from Strowman. His first strikeout, two away. Good look at that hard sinker. So two on, two out. Here's the Shields, who led off the game with a double off the wall and left. And came around to score the game's first run. <laughs> Team high seven hits in the series for the Shields. Well, let's go back and look at the Shields throughout the series. Let's go game two. Let's go stat cast on it. All right. Watch him using the legs, getting down the line. You talk about flying 3.83 down the line on a grounder. Today, we watched him with this going back home on a, on a bang bang play. The explosion to me and the max speed of 20 miles an hour. That's pretty dang good. The 0 2 with Andrews on the move. We're going to replay this. Nope. No, it, it, it'll be interesting because does he hit Donaldson's hand and stop him? And there's uh, his foot, I should say, but here's the tag. Ooh. I think they got him. What do you think, Tom? I think they got him. The question of whether they want to use one of the two challenges right here. So I think he's got that left hand. Not there yet. Yeah, but I will take a look. They're gonna take a look at it. Well, remember they got about 13 different angles than what you see at home on TV when it goes back to the replay center back in New York and Chelsea. I think this is a matter of having two challenges in the postseason where you think, why not? You know, that's the difference between being out of the inning and having two runners in scoring position. Go ahead and take a shot. Well, and let's go back to why you're running here though. You got two strikes on the hitter and you got two outs. And you're, if he was going to run, you run earlier in the AB and give the shield something to work with. Maybe you have a chance to drive you in. So yeah, I agree. I, I don't like the steal on this situation unless you're going to run earlier in the count. Well, some of the Blue Jays are running off the field after the video was shown on the board here. You're going to get third base with two outs here. You better be sure you're safe. Remember in extra innings in game two there was a challenge that went against the Blue Jays. But this time the call stands. Edwin Encarnacion leads off for the Blue Jays here in the bottom of the second inning against Cole Hamels. He's four for 16 in the series 0 for 3 against Hamels in game two. Blue Jays were retired in order in the first. Inside. 
cutter right there. The cutter you'll typically see at 90, 91, four seamer, 94. Opens up the outside part of the plate now. Two and one. And that's the pitch. Tom, you did a great job of explaining that when Gallardo pitched here, how they tried to pound that ball down and away from these right hand hitters. Calabello on deck. Texas Rangers with a 1 0 lead in game five. Series tied at two. Lead off walk. And Carnacion to first. And let's go back to this Elvis Andrews steal right here. As Cole Hamill says, where's that pitch? Here's why he's late, okay? Watch when Stroman lifts his leg. He should be off and running. He hasn't even got to his running position yet. And he's about a step and a half late. That's why he's going to be out at third. The other thing that happens in this situation, when you know there's a trail runner that's going to run with you, and you've already told him you're going, it kind of forces you into having to go even if you don't feel like you got a great jump because you hang him out a little bit. I, I, I just didn't like the play overall. Like the aggressiveness, but not at that time. Here's Colabella, who hold it to the first inning in game four. Here in game five, base hit, right center, and Carnacion to second so the Blue Jays threatening with two on and nobody out here in the bottom of the second inning. Well he's done it throughout this series did it throughout the season. Colabello notorious first ball hitter hit 537 that's right over 500 this year when he put the first pitch into play didn't hit that one hard but perfectly placed. Well this is what's so dangerous about this Toronto lineup. It's almost like now you go three and four, like another three hitter and a four hitter. You got Tula Whiskey and then you got Russell Martin. You can throw them on about 15 teams in the big leagues and they'd hit three and four in their lineup. Tula Whiskey only two hits in the series, but he had the big blow in game three. A three run home run in the sixth inning off Chichi Gonzalez. <laughs> How about that? I'm getting a wow out of that one. Well, you've got a third baseman. You know, is compromised with the back. You've got a hitter right now, despite that home run, scuffling throughout this series. He's not fully healthy. Smart play. Beltre has been playing him back at third base. Tulowitzki 0 for 3 against Hamels in Game 2. He struck out twice. I think the big thing there too is the element of surprise. I don't think anybody expected Tulo to think about bunting. Swings and he fouls it off down the left field line. Nothing and two. A look at the umpires. There's Dale Scott, the crew chief, behind the plate. Dan Bellino at first. James Hoy. Rick Carapazza. Alfonso Marquez in left. And Marvin Hudson in right. Two on, nobody out. The 0-2 to Tulowitzki. Hamels missing high, one and two. Tom, what's he doing? He's setting up what? Well, the thing about Hamels I've noticed already, it's classic Hamels. When he does go in, he doesn't miss in the strike zone. He's trying to get this four-seamer in on the hands. Rarely will he leave the ball in the inside half of the plate. That, Good that, miss. Yeah, I think he's going to go with that changeup right here. That's kind of setting up that outside again. Back with a cutter. I love the cat and mouse, and these two have faced each other enough in the National League that Tulo has a feel for Cole Hamels, and Cole Hamels has a little bit of a feel for Tulo. So you mix it up. We're seeing him mix up his sequence compared to even the last game he pitched in this series. Right, 22 career at bats for Tulowitzki against Hamels, five hits, including two home runs. A one two now two balls two strikes he tried to back door the cutter right there. Well, this is what you pay for the experience of Cole Hamels right here in a bit of a jam the crowd's going crazy. You got an all star hitter at the plate. How do you minimize the damage. That's what you're asking if you're a Texas fan. You're Toronto. You want the big man to jump into one.
Well, here it is, 3-2, right-handed hitter. Most of the time, he will go to the changeup. This one's just off the plate. Nice job by Tulowitzki. Well, he was asking Del Scott earlier, where were those pitches when he was facing Encarnacion? Playoff pitch, foul back. And Tom, that's, that's why it's it. so difficult to, to face with two strikes. You may think he's going change up, but you have to honor that velocity. The big deadline acquisitions by each club Havels and Tulowitzki. with another heater. Let's see if this got the play. Ooh, got a little bit of a call there, huh? Huge I think. call right there. That ball looked down to me. Remember the call is when that ball crosses the plate. Saw Jimenez catch it below the zone and bring it back up. Dale Scott said over the plate. It was at the knee of Tulowitzki. An eight pitch at bat. To Lewinsky down on strikes. Two on, one out for Russell Martin. First pitch, right field, Chu. For out number two. On his way to third is Encarnacion, runners on the corners. So it took eight pitches to retire to Lewinsky, and then Russell Martin swings at the first pitch from Hamels and flies out. Well, let's go back and look at it. And there's the presentation done. I, I think you're right Tom you don't get caught up in the presentation of the catcher pulling that back up Del Scott seeing it as he sees it go over the plate. To me I still think it's down even as it goes over the plate but I'm just saying the catcher bringing the glove up is not that big of an influence right there shouldn't be. But very close to take there leave the at bat in the umpire's hands. Three two count he doubled up on fastballs on Tulowitzki. So with runners on the corners and two outs, here's Kevin Pillar, who has a team leading seven hits in the series. Tied for the major league lead in the postseason. And going back to the regular season, Pillar with a hit in 14 consecutive games. Del Scott's got the little Tim McClellan delay call on us going he on. He did. Talked about it earlier, the experience of Cole Hamels to be able to slow down the situation. He's got first and second, no outs, and it looked like this place was getting ready to erupt. Got a big strikeout, and now he's back to a pop-up. He's got an 0-2 count. Well, what we saw in games three and four, the discipline of the Blue Jays to make Rangers pitchers get the ball into the strike zone. Hamels so far nothing in the center of the plate. I well, see you see the, the contrast of the two offenses too. They get two runners on first and second no outs. They're not running. They're not moving. They're going to have to be knocked in and that's what's hard to beat a guy like Cole Hamels with back to back hits to have to drive the sluggers on the base path home. No balls two strikes. Two outs bottom of the second inning. And Pilar strikes out to end the inning so two on nobody out. And then Hamels shuts the door. First the strikeout to Tulowitzki. Martin flied out on the first pitch and Pilar strikes out as well. First pitch of the inning to Shields rounds out to the third baseman Josh Donaldson. Nice play by Donaldson they haven't drawn in because you got to honor the shield speed which we talked about earlier in the game in Casey Bunts. Now. 
Another thing, we've been talking about this turf a lot. That's one that bounces over your head on old Astro turf. Well, you saw Not the grimace this. by DeShields as well. Remember, he's got a slight tear of the MCL in that left knee. Yeah, I did see that at the end of the play there. Remember, DeShields was at the plate when Andrews was caught stealing to end the second inning. So DeShields led off, and now it's Chu who rounded out to the second baseman, Goins. Moving to Shields over to third, his first time up, and now a drive deep right field. Batista back. He looks up. It's gone. Shin Su Chu takes Marcus Stroman deep, giving the Texas Rangers a 2 0 lead. Well, that's what Chu can do. <laughs> a lot of people think he's just going to be a guy that's going to walk and be patient. We watched him swing aggressively. He finally caught one. I said earlier, I didn't see the same movement on the two seamer. This almost looked like a four seamer. Straight fastball without the run on it. It's Chu's second career postseason home run. He went deep in the wild card game for the Reds. Back in 2013 against the Pirates. Yeah, it's just not the same run on that two seamer, and it stayed right in the barrel. Goins, the first fielder, is retired two away. Tom, go ahead and elaborate on that. Here's, here's the pitch. Well, I think he's got one of the best two seamers. That looks like a four seamer, but the spin on, he's got a very different grip on the two seamer where the seams are not directly underneath his fingers. I think it's one of the best two seamers in baseball. It's certainly one of the oddest grips on it. And to pitch, believe it or not, he really only went to the middle of last year. Had been a traditional four seam curveball pitcher. And that was a good one right there. And he reinvented himself with that two seamer and a very strange grip that he uses. Two 22 home runs during the regular season tied his career high. He was the American League Player of the Month in September. And he has extended the Texas Rangers lead to 2 0. 1 and 2 on Beltre. That two seamer is so good that Trevor Bauer, Cleveland Indians, studied it all winter looking at super slow mo video to see how Marcus does make that two seamer run. He said, whoa, I want one of those. Whoa, 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 whoa. Time was called by the home plate umpire, Dale Scott. Yeah, you get time. Uh, this is interesting. You get time out when the umpire gives it to you, but you know what? In the postseason, you better be ready to go. Adrian stepped out and hopped back in. Right here, here it was. He definitely likes to work fast. Yeah. No question about it. Well, I think that's something they picked up from Mark Burley. When you spend time with somebody on your staff, nobody works faster than Mark Burley, and your defense loves it. Stays, keeps everybody in the game and works quick. He'll turn the base hit into right center. I'll tell you what, they were talking shades of Willis Reed, and for those of you that are younger than us up here, you may not know who Willis Reed was, but he was a big center for the New York Knicks back in the day and he got injured in a big critical world championship series and here comes Will big Willis back out onto the court and that's what they likened it to with Adrian Beltre coming back to the line. Prince Fielder says he's the one guy who he he's a mystery he plays better when he's hurt for some reason. May 8th 1970 Harold. There you go. Willis Reed had the Lakers psyched out during warmups when he came out and hit a couple of shots. There you go. Back in the day. Well, Adrian didn't come out and warm up today either. No BP. Looked for him on the field. He wasn't. He's in the training room stretching most of the time. Nothing and two on Moreland, still looking for his first hit of the series. He's 0 for 11. And here's something to look for. Can Stroman put hitters away? Because remember, the first hitter of the game 
got two quick strikes. I said, uh oh, it's going to be a long day for Texas. And he hadn't been able to put guys away. And Tom, that speaks to what you were talking about with this stuff today. Just not as crisp as it was before. Well, both the curveballs left up to DeShields and to Beltre were waffled. Two strike pitches that he wanted down, both hung up. A one two from Strowman and Moreland fouls it off. I stroke from it. I stroke. Marcus actually looks calm out there. I mean he loves to play with energy and emotion. And he's looking for a strikeout to get himself pumped up. He has said I pitched with anger. Left center. Revere. And it comes to an end, but the Rangers extend to a 2 0 lead. Second career postseason home run off the bat of Shin Su Chu. 2 0 Texas. Middle of the third. Bottom of the third inning in Toronto. Rangers lead the Blue Jays in game five, 2 0. As Ryan Goins leads off for the Blue Jays, he is 0 for 13. In this series. Hamels worked his way out of a two on no out jam in the second inning. And then Chu with the home run off Stroman at the top of the third. A 2 0 from Hamels. Now 2 and 1. Still not a bad time to think about a bunt. Test Beltre at third base and Hamels, unlike Derek Holland, a left hander who actually falls off more towards first base side. Well, a lot of times, what happens if you're a guy like Goins, for example, not swinging the bat great right now, that bunt, even though you may be out, it, it helps your team. It tells you a lot about what Beltre can do, like you're talking about, and it moves Hamels a little bit too. And Revere on deck. Hamels threw 30 pitches over the first two innings. Sixth pitch of this at bat coming up. Good swing. 95 challenge fastball. Cole Hamels. The fastball here Cole comes Hamels again. Has come back about midseason. Started seeing that ball about mid 90s. Goins called out on strikes. Fourth strikeout for Hamels. Boy, he is super sharp. Four seam fastball, the velocity at 95, holding the plane on the corner. I mean, you couldn't have done it better with a paintbrush. Uh, look at how the catcher. Sets up too. His body's off the plate, but the glove is over. The presentation on that to give him a target was beautiful. They've worked very well together, Hamels and Jimenez. Jimenez has started the last 11 Hamels starts, and they've won each and every one of those 11 games. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. You can see it though, it's a great rhythm. He's got an idea what Cole's doing, and that's a, that's a tribute to. Jimenez being able to get with a guy when he comes over and really getting a good flow. You don't see him shaking off. It's in a great rhythm. Now he shakes off. Thanks, Cole. <laughs> and now the 0 2 to Revere. Hamill's making his 321st start in the major leagues, regular season plus postseason. It's his first start in a winner take all game. He's never started game five of a best of five or game seven of a best of seven series. But he has won a couple of series clinching games. Off the glove of Hamels, waiting for it is Andrews, no play. 
Once that ball tipped in the air, you're not getting Ben Revere. He's saying, would you have had it? See, that's one of those tough ones for the pitcher. Do you let it go or do you not? And Elvis is saying he might have had it. I don't know. But I, I, again, I love the communication of Cole Helms, just the court awareness. When you spend time around this guy, you understand why he's so good. You do. Yeah, it's just instinct right there. Can't blame him at all. All right, another big AB from Mr. Donaldson. Donaldson struck out of the first. So Cavill's deep in the first inning back in game two. How fun is this? Great game. The cat and mouse, I love it. Here comes a little curveball again. There is the breaking ball. I think if you're Toronto right now, the difficulty is you cannot rule out any of Hamill's pitches. He's shown the ability to throw everything and put it where he wants to. One out, bottom of the third inning. Revere takes his lead off first. One one to Donaldson. Now one and two. There is no breaking his rhythm either from the Blue Jays right now. You know, draw a throw over if you're Ben Revere. Do something to to take Cole Hamels out of his rhythm a little bit. Even if you're not going to run, draw a throw to first. He's getting it. Pick up his glove and going home and. Being able to execute his pitches, and that's not a good place to be if you're the, the Blue Jays right now. Revere 31 steals during the regular season, and he knows Havels as well as anybody. Teammates the last three years. There you go. Something. He got a little bigger lead that time, and you force Cole to have to do a different action. Just to break up that rhythm. It's like the guy who's shooting free throws all the time. Pretty soon, roll the back to ball back to him, break up his rhythm a little bit. I want to to Donaldson now. Two balls, two strikes. Well, Hamels is very deliberate to the plate. Base dealers 20 out of 23 this year, but he's got a very good Bach move to first base. You really have to pay attention to that. With the club, the offense they have, I don't, I don't think they want to cut him loose. They're looking for the big ball for the next two guys. <laughs> Bounce to the left side of the infield. Andrews fires across to retire Donaldson for out number two. That was a great play by Elvis Andrews. I don't know if that was a delay still or just Ben Revere getting a good jump, but he knew he had no play at second base. When that ball's hit, you're thinking second. He doesn't hesitate. And he knows his play is going to be at first, and Revere's already sliding in second base. He goes to second with that ball. Revere's safe. See where Revere's at? He goes to second, he's safe. So the reaction and understanding that Revere's got a little bit of a lead, he's got great speed. Once you take four steps to your right, I had no play at second, I'll go to first. Right there, he's got no play at second, but that wasn't a look, that was an understanding of who's on and how the ball was hit off the bat. Great play. Unknown, but it's a great play. It won't be remembered much. Noticed by a former middle infielder. Yeah, you pick those things up, man. You appreciate it. Bautista fly to right back in the first inning. Revere the runner on second with two outs. Uh, he's popped up to the right side five times in this series. This time a base hit. To the left field corner. Revere scores. And Bautista is safe at second with an RBI double. Blue Jays cut the Rangers lead in half. We'll see if we get a review on this. That's the first one. Well, he squared a ball up in Texas the other night for a double off the wall. Right here, he gets a ball inside. You can't continue to flirt with him in all the time. Nice piece of hitting by Bautista, but here's where that replay comes in, and here's where the stalling is going on in the game right now, where we can show all these replays because Texas is waiting to see what might happen. Here's the look everybody's waiting for. Does he come off the bag? 
That's the big question. This will give us a good look right here. Great slide. I don't think you can take that away from him right there. That's not worth the challenge. I was talking about him popping the ball up to the right side. Sometimes he does have a tendency to pull off the baseball, and that's where you'll get the weak fly balls to the right side. That was the case with the ball in, stayed on the baseball, and absolutely hammered it. This again is another one of those tactics now with replay. They didn't think they had a good angle. Maybe they're waiting to see other angles and see if they got a chance. The other aspect, guys, remember the Rangers already challenged the play back in the second inning. You got to keep one in your pocket. I think you'd have to be 99% certain you're going to win that challenge to burn that challenge. Yeah, you don't, you don't burn it here. It, this is going to be a tight game all the way down to the end. But you can clearly see what infielders are doing now. Rugnet Odor leaving that tag on the runner. He's safe clearly, but just leave it on him and wait and hope he slides off and you might get it on the replay. Well, not only leave it on him, but push it on him as well. <laughs> Encarnacion takes ball one. Walked his first time up. One run in. Bautista the runner on second with two outs. Well, I'm looking at that pitch count too. He's at 49. They've done it. He's got out of some jams, but they've made him work. These have been a lot of stress pitches. Hamels threw 114 pitches in game two on Friday. He's on regular rest four days. Behind of the count 2 0 to Encarnacion. There's Mike Maddox, Rangers pitching coach. Fans don't like it. Fans don't like it, but I think it's a smart move for the Rangers. Although the man on deck has been hotter than a pistol. I think that's what the conversation with Maddox was when he came out. Which one of these guys do you want? You fall fall behind him, put him on, and we'll go after the other guy. That's why that conversation right there was, because you're looking not at the hitter right then, you're looking down the road. How do I get out of this jam? And again with Colabello, you want to get ahead, but be careful. First ball hitter hits over 500. Better be a quality first pitch strike. Third time Encarnacion has been walked intentionally in this series. Colabello a single back in the second inning two on two out. Ooh, that, that didn't look like a good spin move that looked like a bop. Everybody's yelling at second base up but he's saying no. New set of signs from Jimenez. It is loud in here. It's an exciting game. This is great. The winner moves on. Yeah, this roof being closed makes it louder. Right. <laughs> Even Chris had to grin at that one. <laughs> he got what he was looking for in the fastball. <laughs> they just didn't get the baseball. <laughs> Kept it away from him just enough, though. Loses the footing. The 1 1 for Pavels. Colabello stays on his feet. Takes. Ball two. Now Jimenez was asking for a foul tip on this call. Cut fastball. Colabello tried to hold up on. Says it foul and he caught it. 
Well, he clearly caught it. But I don't know how you, you get the foul tip. Well, his reaction right away, Jimenez. Oh, you heard it right there. There's a double click. Sounded like it. But that's awful hard for Dell Scott to hear right now. It's not exactly a library here, is it? No. <laughs> hard to hear anything, never mind a faint tip of the ball on the back. Cipher, and if you look at it, it, doesn't even look like the ball hits the bat. See a slight change of direction, but not much. Whoever said this is a game of inches overestimated it. And now the umpires will get together. Good job by Dale Scott right here. Well, they're discussing is this reviewable or is it not reviewable? I'm sure they know immediately, but there did anybody see anything or anybody hear anything? They didn't hear it. I guarantee you that. That's the first thing you do. You get the guys together and you say, What do you got? Tell me what you saw. Nothing. Nope, nobody saw it. But you know what? It's also a formality. Get together. The worst thing they could do is say, Nope, we're not going to meet. What good does that accomplish anything? So you meet. We come back and say we don't have it. Now the manager's pleased, everybody's pleased to go play the game. And remember, no pitch changes a count outcome more than the 1-1 one, one pitch. And a foul tip not on the list of reviewable plays. 2-1 to Colabello. Now 2-2. Two and two. That one I heard. No. <laughs> no question about that one. Foul ball's getting a lot of folks on comments in trouble up here. Dating back to game one, right, Harold? <laughs> <laughs> two on, two out. Well, two, two. And the count is full. He had him full, too, because Colabello looked like he was looking for the changeup, looking at his body motion. Watch him lean to go out and get it. And this ball comes right back inside on him. Usually he's hitting off the fastball, right? Yeah, the way he took that looked to me like he was looking for something away. Now, as you just vanished to behind our camera, this will be the 28th pitch of the inning from Hamels. Another foul. That's that 3 2 change up to the right hander loves that pitch. That's his money pitch. You can almost see that 58 and dock it too because two of them were for the intentional walk. It ends up making it 56. In my book. I mean, his change up is the equivalent of most pitchers' fastball the confidence and control. Out for a chat with Hamels. I actually think this is a great conversation. I mean, change the signs. You got Batista stand at second base for too long to see your signs and be able to read them. Well, it's a great day of postseason action coming up next on FS1. It's Game Five: Astros and Royals. And then tomorrow on TBS, Game 5 from Los Angeles, Mets and Dodgers. Cubs have advanced to the National League Championship Series. Payoff pitch to Colabello. Bounce to the shortstop, Andrews. And the inning comes to an end. A long one for Havels. Blue Jays score a run on two hits through three. 2-1 Texas. We move to the fourth in Toronto. Kenny Albert, Harold Reynolds, Tom Berducci, Ken Rosenthal. Josh Hamilton leads off for the Rangers following an 18-minute bottom of the third. Hamels threw 29 pitches, allowed just one run. You talk about that first hit hitting. You look at the, uh, the series average for Josh Hamilton. When he had that big World Series, he was killing the first pitch. 
walked his first time up today. Hamilton Andrews Odor for the Rangers against Stroman here in the fourth. Stroman got me a little careful here. I, I, I got that feeling for Josh. He's starting to feel it. They continue to stay soft on Josh. Fastball prior to that. That's just show me fastball out of the zone. Good pitch. Curveball, the tight spin. Bottom out. A one two. Again, I go back to what we were discussing the last time the Jays were in the field. Being able to put guys away that will tell you about Marcus Stroman's stuff. Stroman allowed a run in the first following the leadoff double off the bat of the Shields and then a solo home run in the third. Hit by Chu. Long foul down the right field line. Two and two on Hamilton. Pilar coming in left center he dives and makes the catch. Ooh. Say, he doesn't get that ball nobody gets to it. We've been talking all series about the jumps he gets on the ball. But it's also the explosion and the athleticism this guy can go get him with the best of them. This ball has no business falling. look where he starts. Here he comes Tom. Well, one thing that he does, Marcus Stroman wants him to play more shallow than for the other starting pitchers. Stroman's philosophy is, hey, if it's hit over your head, that's on me, not on you. And right here, the extra steps in with Stroman on the mound turns into an out. Stroman appreciative. One away, here's Andrews. You know how big that out is because similar to what I talked about with the Blue Jays when they're in the, mid, the bottom part of their order is almost like with Tua Whiskey and Russell Martin being four and five. It's Elvis Andrews should become a two hitter and he's able to move the runner hit and run do some things by Hamilton not being on the bag that negates all that right there. And now you get the ground ball and you're almost out of the inning. He's an amazing defender one of the best for sure at any position. He actually made a catch back in April. And he told me he considers a life changing catch. Why? Because he was kind of a utility guy, not a hot prospect until this moment. I don't know too many people who have taken a home run away in this ballpark with the height of that fence. You saw it right there, it made all the highlights. Let me tell you, it wasn't just that people were talking about him. He earned a job here after that, but that's what got his name on the marquee a life changing catch. A la Bo Jackson back in the day. And Pilar left his mark. Yes, he did. <laughs> Long stroll. And remember, Rugnet Odor hit that double the other day, late in the game, and they had played him with a full, complete shift. He changed. How they play him on one swing. And they're not changing how they're going to pitch it. They're living away. Odor has scored six runs in the series, five over the first two games. Jimenez on deck should Odor reach to the right side Goins Rangers retired in order thanks in large part 
with a spectacular catch made in left center by Pilar. Frank Tulowitzki leads off for the Blue Jays here in the bottom of the fourth inning against Cole Hamels. Tulowitzki came up with two on, nobody out of the second, an eight pitch at bat. And he was called out on strikes. And that may be the single biggest at bat of the game right now. You're looking at bases loaded, no outs, if, if that's a ball. And Cole Hamels is in trouble, deep, deep trouble at that point. He's able to wiggle out the rest of the inning. Yeah, this guy thinks he's never in trouble, though. The fastball executed to Tulawitzki, and then the changeup, 3 2 changeup to Colabello to get out of last inning. The 1 1. Right back to the box. Uh oh. Hamels to Borland. 1 away. We spoke between innings with Rangers skipper Jeff Bannister. We asked Jeff about the importance of scoring first today. Extremely important for us. It's been something that we haven't been able, been able to do the last two games, and that's how we play the game. I mean, anytime we get the shields on, we feel like we're going to score, but to get on the board first was imperative for us. Hey, Jeff, uh, Cole's doing what you expected. You got the big guy in the big game. But they're uh, working him a little bit. What about these stress pitches? Are you concerned about the pitch count? Well, not with Cole, really. Uh, you know, this is a guy I believe he gets stronger as he goes, and I, I think as, as he settles in, finds a rhythm, he, he finds some better movement on the baseball, a little better rhythm, finds the strike zone a little better. So I, I think it benefits him. We'll keep a close eye on it, but uh, this is our guy out there. We know that he can go away. Jeff, if and when you go to your bullpen, how are decisions different in a game like today? Well, uh, this is a, a ball game. Uh, whoever loses goes home. We, I imagine we'll, we'll employ our, our big boys earlier if we need to, uh, depending on what, what the situation is. And uh, we'll see how this one plays out, though. Thanks, Jeff. Good luck. You got it, guys. Thank you. Russell Martin flies out to chew and right for out number two. Jeff Bannister, 29 years in the Pittsburgh Pirates organization as a player, coach, minor league manager. He's the first manager in Texas Rangers franchise history who attended either high school or college in the state of Texas. Riding back home. He's got a daughter playing volleyball at Baylor. He attempted to attend a game recently, but once he saw the traffic, got to turn back around, unfortunately. Yeah, you can run into some traffic. Get up that 35 on the wrong time. Forget about it. Don't get mad at me now for saying that. Just <laughs> saying. People get sensitive on me. They love you here in Toronto. <laughs> Your luggage ever show up, by the way? Uh, it's kind of a funny story. I mean, we got the customs. Tom and I fly in, and and uh, his luggage got to his house. <laughs> See, there's all the Canadians that can't catch. You didn't say anything about catching fair balls. No. <laughs> I'm not going there at all. <laughs> I'm sorry. Top of the fifth here in Toronto, game five. Series tied at two. Texas Rangers with a 2 1 lead. Strike one to Chris Jimenez. Struck out his first time up back in the second inning. You know, it sounded good. It looked good. That looked like, I know it was only 92 on the gun, but that was as loose as the arm has been all day right there. I thought that was the most fluid pitch he's thrown this afternoon. He fell into a pretty good rhythm last game he pitched about the fourth or fifth inning he started getting that flow you could see it coming on right he retired 14 straight at one point. A one two slow roller to the left side no play for Tulowitzki. The reason you heard the ooh from me is if Donaldson can cut that off you always want to cut it off and. When you got two premier defenders, you kind of you, you get caught in between. What's the angle? If Donaldson can get this, go get it. It's his. But he knows Tulo has the cannon to make the throw. So you have a tendency to play back and let him make the play. And now it became a bang bang have to play. I think if Donaldson cuts him off, 
and goes and gets it. You got an out at first. It's the second leadoff hit for the Rangers today. They had only four over the first four games. Well, that ball might have clipped the shield. That's a situation where he's trying to move the runner up, but bunting for a base hit. Worst case scenario, runner on second base. But this ball's going to run in on him. Right up the and bottom it does. Of his hand. Yep. Like caught a knuckle there in the right hand. But Tom, you're right. You bunt for a hit, the first strike, and then after that, you go ahead and sacrifice it. That's what they're trying to get you to do. Oh, shot. That hit him. That one hit him in the jaw. Well, he leaned over the plate to get to the bunting position. That's a two seamer. That's a tracer running in on him. Oh, his bat. The bat hit. comes up, clocks him in the jaw. What an at bat so far for DeShields. My goodness. It's foul ball. Whatever happened to you, Harold? No, not like that. But I, I tell you what, that's a great pitch from Stroman for a right handed batter. He knows he's going to bunt. You want to run it up and in. It didn't happen to me because I was a switch hitter. You know, so, but I've seen that happen. I actually. Saw Bobby Meacham in college at San Diego State bunt and hit off the plate, come up and bust his teeth up. You know, I watched that happen to him. But got hit by a punch. Here's the first pitch. Looking for a hit off the bottom of his knuckle. And there's the next one running in off the bat into the face. That's an excellent location with that pitch. If you know a guy's bunt and you want to get it up and in, looking for the ball to be popped up. I bet he didn't want to bunt again. <laughs> he ain't thinking about that right now. Woo! The 0 2. Donaldson. Mm -mm. So the Blue Jays get the lead runner at second. Time now for our. Maytag trivia question with 24 year old Marcus Stroman on the mound. Who is the youngest starting pitcher to win the clinching game of a postseason series? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> you got it? No. <laughs> Did your homework research on that one? No, I actually cheated on this one. I'm, so I'm, I'm, I'm deferring. I'm not getting into it this time. I cheated. I know the answer. All right, we'll give the viewers some time to think about it. Shields back at it first. Here's Chewy homered back in the third. That was the first Rangers home run since game one. They went 36 innings without going deep. Wow. And with this lineup, you'd think with all the thunder they have, you might be able to get a ball over the fence a tad bit. One out. Top of the fifth inning, 2 1 Texas. You know, you would think that Stroman has got great quick feet, but he's got a high leg kick. You can run on him, but he's got very quick delivery as you see Sanchez getting loose. Yeah, very quick to the plate. 30 career games, only five stolen bases allowed. And only four starts during the regular season. Guys, the only time the starting pitcher made less than five starts in the regular season and then pitched in a winner take all game in the postseason you have to go back to 1952 the World Series Joe Black of the Dodgers wow. two starts during that regular season the Shields goes and Chu fouls it back you got a great jump yeah I think one of the reasons that the, the still stolen base total on Stroman is so low they don't attempt you guys don't run that was a great jump and I think with his high leg kick you have to challenge him. But the challenge is see, he has enough high of a kick for you to be able to get a nice jump on him. But the challenge is when his hands are moving he's got a great pickoff move. He's got great quick feet. Time call by the home plate umpire Dale Scott. It's a good call by Chu, the hitter, the guy who's stolen bases before. When that pitcher starts to hold, you need that hitter to help you as a base runner. 
call time because all they're doing is holding and trying to see if you're going to lean or give something up. David Price pitched three innings out of the pen for the Blue Jays in game four. Going. There goes the Shields. And Chu got a piece of it. And you saw that picture of David Price in the dugout, not in the bullpen. John Gibbons telling us he does not want to use him today. He's got the spikes on, as you can see. But he said, I just can't ask more out of him throwing 50 pitches in game four. He went even deeper than that and said all that he's done for this team the innings he's given us anytime we've asked ways developed de delivered. Two down on strikes two away. Well you really have to pound you in we saw earlier he did not get away with the fastball in this time he does better location you see better run underneath the barrel of Chu. Much better movement. In Texas, you almost wish he'd have swung and missed the two pitches before. The Shields had great jumps. They should be running now. Just foul. Fielder drove it a run back in the first inning, his first postseason RBI, and his last 94 plate appearances dating back to 2012. Well, Tom, I think if you're the Shields, just sit right now. You let Prince try to swing the bat, you let Beltre try to swing it. If not, you got Prince leading off the next half inning. Just sit, let the big boys do their damage. They, they ran out of an inning already with Elvis Andrus. Backdoor breaking ball. Watch the frame effort by Martin. Good job by Dale Scott not influenced by the frame but calling the pitch over the plate. He's had a very strong night Dale Scott. He really has he's had a nice plate and I tell you it's a challenge because every catcher they've always been taught the frame you can go back to yesteryear but today with replay and everything else when fans watching everything the scrutiny is a little bit deeper I think. Two and two on fielder. Two outs. Top of the fifth inning. Texas Rangers with a 2 1 lead. The winner will move on to the American League Championship Series. of the fifth and Toronto game five as Ryan Goins takes a called strike from Cole Hamels Goins called out on strikes in the third inning. 0 for 14 in the series. This is big you know Cole Hamels had a nice quick half inning. It's a big at bat for him to get the left hander here to kind of keep himself on a bit of a roll. Down the left field line. Now two and two. Share your favorite postseason memories using hashtag MLB Memory Bank. Goins, then Revere, then Donaldson. Rangers with a two to one lead.
Goins down on strikes for the second time today. We're talking about memory banks. I go back to 1993 and how loud this place was called Sky Dome back then. I think it's actually been even louder here, Rogers Center, during this game. Yeah, it really has. The, the other day was loud too, but you're right. But I also think people are so into sports, even more so now, being able to connect with fantasy, baseball, you know, all the different things that engage people in it, video games, you name it. Revere lays down the puck, barehanded by Petre. What a play. Wow. And what a bunt, what a play. And had to challenge him. Absolutely, but the play was all made by the anticipation of Adrian Beltre expecting this bunt to be toward his way. The first step quickness actually reading the hands on the bat before the ball even hit the bat. He made this look easy. Look how close he is. Watch the movement coming in on the bunt. As you said, Harold, it's not a bad bunt, but look how close he is to field that baseball and the money throw to first. And, and the one thing I know, look at his right hand. He's got rosin in there, so this ball's going to stick. He was anticipating that bunt coming from one of those two guys. Either Goins or Revere. He knew they were going to have to challenge him. Donaldson 0 for 2. I don't think I've ever seen a, a defenseman, a third baseman, have rosin or dirt in his hand because he wants to make sure that ball's not going to spin out of it. Beltre playing through pain, did not play in game two or three. John Gibbons, the Blue Jays skipper, when we asked him about Beltre prior to the game, he said he's the heart and soul of their team. Well, and you can tell being around him, the, the attitude, the way he carries himself. Well, he's doing much better, clearly moving much freer. Rangers did run an MRI on him, really didn't see anything in there, just back spasms. Two on to Donaldson. Pops it into shallow right, two under it. And we head to the sixth in Toronto. Canada connection there. I was going to guess Brett Saberhagen 85. That would been good. But wrong. <laughs> I, I, I saw the. I actually put the question together. I'll just be honest. With you. Did you really? Yeah. It's no. about time. Usually it's Tom. Yep. Well, here we are, sixth inning of game five. The Blue Jays outscored the Rangers by 141s during the regular season, but it's a 2-1 Texas lead in the sixth. It's everything you want in a sudden death game, right? One run game, middle innings. Both starting pitchers have really settled down the last couple of innings, but now is the point in the game where it becomes a manager's game. And by that, I mean the starting pitchers now working through a lineup for the third time, and obviously it is not a game where patience is rewarded. Bullpen decisions will loom extremely large in this game. Well, especially when you start looking at Stroman's pitch count. He's at 87, and we are just in the sixth. The 0 2 to Beltre got him. Third consecutive strikeout for Marcus Stroman. And he's in that great groove, and the only thing that concerns you right now is the pitch count. It looks like he's getting it all working. The fastball's coming back. And why is that pitch count so important? When you get to about that hundred mark, we we're talking about Cole Hamels is at 79. He's older. He understands how to maybe be able to manufacture through some innings. And that I think it's important for Stroman to get some quick outs. Speaking of young pitchers, guys, Stephen Matt started game four for the Mets last night. He and Stroman grew up together on Long Island in New York. They played on travel teams since they were eight years old. They were born the same month. They were roommates during summer baseball. And they also pitched against each other in high school. It was a memorable game. They combined to strike out 26. I don't only think so. <laughs> four combined hits. And Matt's team won that game 1 nothing. But they keep in touch. Good buddies. And somebody's. Into the shift. Orland grounds out for out number two. Somebody sitting at home right now saying, you know what, I got one of those hits. <laughs> and a lot of them are saying, I got none of those hits. Right, exactly. 
Official caps, hoodies, jackets, and more. Celebrate with your favorite team at the MLB.com shop. Stroman's dad, by the way, a police detective in New York. His dad, Earl. Hamilton, deep left center. Bounces off the wall. Hamilton in its second with a two out double. That was one at bat short with Josh. You can see it starting to come on, and when he gets it going, He's a lot like other guys that get hot first pitch. This is the first time he's actually showed signs of shooting the ball the other way. He's so strong. This ball almost gets out of the yard. He doesn't even square it up. You think his personal story is amazing. This year just continued the odyssey. It's a crazy year he has had. Returning to the Rangers. Suffered the knee injury in September, underwent arthroscopic surgery, and Hamilton was back a week later. Incredible. Pinch hit, and then came back and played 13 days later, started and played nine innings. Boy, that was a tremendous pitch right on the corner. It's a big at bat, Tom. Strong throwing arms in center field and right field. Less so in left field for Toronto. Nothing at two on Andrews. Wow. What a catch by Russell Martin. This ball missed by about three feet. Look where the look where he's set up at. Look where it starts and it just runs. Remember he's anticipating this ball coming back to the plate and it didn't great reactions tremendous catch. Two and two. Takes his lead off second. Texas Rangers with a 2 1 lead, top of the sixth. Three straight two seamers that he missed with trying to run back over the outside corner of the plate. It's not the same comeback movement. To Andrews up the middle, backhanded by Collins to first for the third out of the inning. Well, that's a game saver right there. That's a run and it's a 3 1 game. Tremendous play by Ryan Goins up the middle. And then he's got the cannon of a shortstop to make the throw. Bottom of the sixth in Toronto. Some of Harold's friends on hand. There we go. Come with the outfit. I love it. Bautista leads off for the Blue Jays who trail by a run. Cole Hamels threw 29 pitches in the third inning. Only 10 of the fourth, 10 in the fifth. Yeah, you know, that's one of the things that he does. You see Grinky do it a lot. That's a veteran. Understands, okay, my pitch count was up. I had some stress innings. Let me get some quick outs. And how you do that is you put the ball in, in a place and that they're going to make contact. Keep him in the park. He had to try to strike out guys early, and now he's minimized his pitch count. He's down to 82 pitches, and he's he's still sitting like he can finish this now. He's allowed only three hits over the first five innings. The one run scored in the third on a Bautista double. I'll go back to what Jeff Bannister said about his ace. He gets better as the game goes on. First three innings, 258 batting average. Middle three, 230. And last three, 186. The numbers back up the manager. Today, he has retired the last seven batters 
he has faced. Retire the Blue Jays in order of the fourth, and again in the fifth. Payoff pitch from Hamels popped up. Foul territory. One out. Our game summary is sponsored by Budweiser. Game five, series tied at two. Prince Fielder drove in the first run of the game. Chu with a solo shot in the third. Hamels has been outstanding. Blue Jays have led for only three innings at home in this series. Here is Shinsu Chu. Took Marcus Stroman deep. Solo shot back in the third. First home run for the Rangers since game one. The Blue Jays had hit the last five home runs prior to that shot by Chu. And Carlos Yelly with a drive. We are tied at two. Inside and he smoked it. Mr. Encarnacion. His first career postseason home run. And I loved his reaction after the home run. He knew it was gone the minute he touched it off. He's hit 268 home runs during the regular season had never played in the postseason prior to this series. Earlier in the game I said Hamels had not left the ball over the middle of the plate. He did right there first pitch fastball. Blue Jays led all of baseball during the regular season with 232 home runs. They've hit seven in this series. And Carnacion into the third deck here at Rogers Center. Calabello down on strikes, two away. Well, here's the reaction. As soon as he gets this ball, that's when you know you got one. I mean, when you hit him in the third deck, I guess you can do that. Ball no, blistered. No doubter. So Jimenez set up outside. Tell you what, I'm impressed with those. Cole Hamels came back and he went soft and soft. Call Bella, you know you want to go back to back on him, right? Pressure just keeps coming from this offense. You're out there on a the mound. Cole Hamill's executing all day long. The one time he makes a mistake in the middle, Blue Jays just do not miss. I think this is the most difficult offense in the American League to navigate through. Because they don't strike out. There's power, but a lot of teams have some thunder. But there's strikeouts in that thunder. There's ways to get out. These guys don't strike out much. And that makes it even more difficult. A one two to Tulowitzki. Two balls, two strikes. Tell you what, did that one swing wake this joint up or what? <laughs> Mercy. Well, now it's really a manager's game. And Aaron Sanchez was throwing in the bullpen like he's coming into this game with the right handers due up for Texas.
Second time today, but the Blue Jays have tied game five as Encarnacion takes Hamels deep in the sixth. We head to the seventh in Toronto, tied at two. Twenty-four-year-old Marcus Stroman, the Duke grad, threw 98 pitches in his second start of this series, allowed two runs on six hits in six innings. And now coming out of the bullpen for the fifth time in this series he's pitched in every game began the season in the Blue Jays rotation made 11 starts the right hander Aaron Sanchez love his arm you talk about nice and easy fluid motion and boom boom jumps on in 96 97 look at that 98 and what I mean by easy motion if you were throwing a ball real easy it would come slow at you he just has a nice easy and then boom jumps on you. Odor one for two. Two right handed hitters behind him. Big splits on Sanchez has allowed nine home runs to left handed hitters none to right handers. But just in the last few weeks of the season he has added a cut fastball to go at that hard sinker. A one one. Now two balls one strike. Hundred miles an Triple hour. digits. I tell you what I, I eliminate anything off speed with this guy. You can't even think about it. Odor with a base hit into left field. So the Rangers have the leadoff man on in the seventh in a tie game. You know what? That's why you got to have movement, man. You can't, no matter how hard you're throwing, it's hard to throw a fastball by a big leaguer that can hit a fastball. This is about 98 to 100. Same thing. Smokes it to left. Pretty hitting. Second hit of the game for Odor. Here's the number nine hitter, Jimenez. He does have four sacrifice hits this season. Infield hit back in the fifth, struck out in the second. Donaldson in at third. Creeping even closer. As Jimenez lays down the bunt. Beautiful. Sanchez to first. So Jimenez does his job, moves Odor to second. Rangers have a runner in scoring position. Oh, how about this play by Ryan Goins? Look at his position. He's like Dustin Pedroia 2.0, where he'll jump before the ball as the ball's being thrown to the plate. Save a run. And then the run ties the game by Encarnacion. Defense, offense. It's almost like a tennis player returning serve. Jumps up in the air, lands on the balls of his feet. Every pitch. Statcast powered by Amazon Web Services. Ball one two to Shields. Rangers 0 for 4 today with runners in scoring position. Well because of the Shields speed and Odor speed you force the middle infielders to pinch a little bit and it opens up a ground ball to shoot through. Here's Donaldson charging. It and makes the play. Wow what a play. That was beautiful. This ball actually kicks behind him. 
Watch the, the dexterity and, and ability to adjust. This ball's gonna bounce, it's gonna kick back on him. He reaches back, gets it, and continues on one throw with a full hand and guns him out. Wow. Uh, this, is, this is a big play. That ball kicked back on him, and he made a great adjustment. Full speed on the run. I mean, that's impressive. Another tremendous defensive play. So now, Odor is at third with two outs. Two at the plate. Took Stroman deep in the third. 0 for 3 lifetime against Sanchez. Downstairs to Ken Rosenthal. Ken. Guys, the Blue Jays were very disappointed in their defense the first two games here. They thought it really cost them. And that's been uncharacteristic of them since the Tulo trade. Their defense has gotten much better. And what we've seen today is much more along the lines of what was going on since July 31st. And let's remember, too, no left handed reliever available for John Gibbons. David Price, not available. Brett Cecil, injured. Aaron Loop, not available. Out off to the right side, one and two. Yeah, that's a great point, Tom, because now you would probably have seen a left-hander with the two lefties coming up. You got Chu and then Prince Fielder back to back. I think you got to bring another about 98 or 100 and go up with it and see if Chu can catch up to it. Russell Martin's thinking the same thing. Look at this. Ball's That's dead. Dead ball. The ball actually hit Chu's bat as Martin went to throw it back to the pitcher. Well, why is it dead? Why is it dead? That ball's alive. Well, Dale Scott signaled immediately. That ball's alive. Unless he thought that Chu crossed over the plate. No, what Chu is doing, just getting ready. He's just getting ready to hit again. He's just standing there getting ready to hit. Watch this. He's getting himself ready to hit. And that's just a throwback and a hit the bat. That's, that's not Chu's fault. That is not interference. That's his every, he, the same motion he does that every at bat. So that's. Now remember Jeff Bannister's a catcher and he's going to call him in. I'm telling you, that's and the other part about this the run score. Ordor came in and touched the plate. That's so important because if they come back and rule that ball's live then that run has to count. Well, Dale Scott called it so quickly my first reaction was that Chu did step across the plate but clearly he did not. He was in his normal finished position. This is a tough one right here. Now the interesting thing here is you got two catchers that are managers. All right. And this is. See clearly, I mean, she was in the batter's box. Look, it's, look, it's no different in my mind. I could be totally wrong, but I don't think I am here. It's no different than if Russell Martin throws the ball down and the pitcher hits off the glove and he drops it, or if he threw it and it hit off the back of his bat. He's oh. got to score. And here he scores. That's a that's a run score. I think that's the right call. I do too. It's incidental contact, and it's no different than if he threw the ball any other place. He just happened to hit the bat. Chu did not intentionally interfere. Well, I always look at is this normal movement and he just got himself ready. He's still in the box getting ready to hit. I still think the key to this play is Ruben Odor comes across and scores. Think about a major league baseball season and how many times a catcher throws the ball back to the pitcher. And in this case. 
sends home the tie-breaking run, the seventh inning of a sudden death game. Now, what they're going to do right now is they're going to go back and, and actually review. I guess the umpires have that option to do it. They've been asked. It's too important of a game, I guess, not to. But they'll call back unless they would like to confirm where Odor was. True. Down the base path. But I think this is the right new right move to do. There's too much at stake in a 2-2 game in the seventh and a game five to not make sure you're 100 percent correct. Let's watch Odor. Time is never called. That's the other thing. The since you two didn't call time. No, by the time Dale Scott had called time, Odor was already on his way to the plate. Right. Now this play, this type of play is not listed as far as plays that are subject to review. However, as we said, they could be looking at where exactly Odor was. Well, I think the enormity of the situation calls for them to go ahead and make the call. There's no problem when they make the call back. For those that don't know, you, you call back to Chelsea, New York, the supervisors are there watching the games where replays are done from. You get a, 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 a person who's not emotionally attached to the game right now to give you their perspective. And I think that's very important. That's Dale Scott, the crew chief on the right. Now, well, if they, if they reverse the call, we're going to be here another 30 minutes with Jeff Bannister arguing. But my point here in the beginning was you've got two managers that are catchers. It's a, it's a crazy play. It is. Now another element could be the fact that Dale Scott waved his arms so soon and ruled no play. It was too. Late. He was already scoring. He seemed to be responding to the movements of the pitcher Sanchez, who right away said, "Hey, ball hit his bat." Then you got the timeout, dead ball, and Odor was already on his way to the plate. So he's going to go and explain to. Uh, Mr. Gibbons, what's going on, too? So here's manager John Gibbons looking for an explanation from Dale Scott. I, think, I don't think this. He said the batter's in the box still. He was saying the bat was not in the box. I think that's what they're looking at, whether the bat of Chu was extended. Beyond the batter's box. His feet were in the box. Game's under protest. That's what Del Scott just called. Well, I'm not sure that's going to do them any good. The rule of a protest is you can only protest a rule that is improperly applied. You cannot protest a judgment call. Let's watch the bat of Chu. Uh, to me, that's in the box. And again, we've referred to rule 6.03 and another element of that rule, reading from the Major League Rulebook, if the batter is standing in the batter's box and he or his bat is struck by the catcher's throw back to the pitcher, and the umpire's judgment, there is no intent on the part of the batter to interfere with the throw. The ball is alive and in play. That's exactly what we've been talking about. It's no different in my mind if he throws the ball and, the, and it gets all the way to the pitcher and he drops it and it rolls away and the runner scores because once the ball's released it doesn't matter at what point he releases the ball he still threw it away the ball's live the ball's hot and if Ordor's in his natural motion and movements he I mean uh, since you chew and he's not intentionally interfering you can't say there was any foul on his part. I know it's hard to hear but that's the facts and that's the rules. Yeah, they're trying to figure out who was thrown out of the game. 
Well, I would have volunteered Brett Cecil. If yeah, I somebody the not on the roster. I'd raise my hand right away. Yeah, you got me. An error has been charged to Russell Martin on the throw. All right, here we go. Finally, back to live action. As Chu fouls off the next pitch from Sanchez following an 18 minute delay. Rolling from Scott. Chu strikes out. Rangers have taken the lead in the most bizarre fashion. Seventh inning stretch time. They're already standing in Toronto. Bottom of the seventh inning in Toronto. Russell Martin, who was charged with the error, which led to the go ahead run. Martin leads off against Hamels. With the Rangers leading 3 2. And Jeff Bannister will start this inning with his bullpen getting warm after that lengthy delay for his starting pitcher, Cole Hamels. The delay was 18 minutes after Martin's throw back to the mound, hit the bat of Chu. There's Stubbs in center, replacing the Shields. Broken bat grounder. Andrews could not handle it. Lead off man on for the Blue Jays in the bottom of the seventh. That's the speed of Russell Martin. Not a lot of catchers run very well. Forces Andrews to hustle, have to hustle. He just misplayed it. He doesn't miss many balls. Yeah, he just clanked it. He had time. See, he closed the glove early off the heel. Late innings. Postseason elimination game. Tension builds. So an error committed by Andrews. Here's Pilar, who has struck out twice today. Rip foul down the left field line. It's a big error with Andrews right there because it does. You had Cole Hamels in a nice little roll. He came right back after the delay. And that you get that quick out early. It keeps the crowd out of it and everything. That was a big error. Nothing and two on Pilar. Well, and they're going for the juggler right now. You got. Justin Smoke out on the on the on deck circle hit for Goins. So they're going to make a move. I thought maybe you might see Pilar move him a little bit, but that's not going to be the case. Moving meaning move the runner, not the case here. Good rips. I tell you, there's a lot of guys that have really played well, and their stock has gone through the roof. Nobody more than this guy. He has been so impressive. Yeah, I agree, and that's why from the get-go, that's why he swings the bat. Toronto doesn't really play to manufacture runs, but he's been one of their hotter sticks in the lineup. We've watched him have some power. We've shown the speed, the great defense, throw. He's done it all in the four and almost five games now in this series. The 106th pitch from Cole Hamels. Well, I think Cole Hamels gets through this as much as he can this inning, and then that's all we're going to see from him. This is going to be a bullpen game the rest of the way out. Well, he's got Pilar in swing mode right now. He's been pounding that cutter in. I'm very surprised if Hamels shows him anything in the zone. The left hander Jake Diekman and the right hander Sam Dyson in the Texas pen. the ground to the right side. Oh my. Everybody's safe. Oh my. We got the left handed first baseman. He's got the easy throw for the force. And Moreland just shanked it. Once again tension 
late innings, postseason elimination game, nothing routine. Well, what happens here? It allows them to bring Goins back out here to bunt. Andrews almost came up with it. But now you take Justin Smoke back. Look at Russell Martin take the lane out right there. And that takes away a little bit of the angle to throw. And that causes a little bit of a shank. But I think he had already gripped the ball poorly before Russell Martin made his turn. <laughs> Two errors in the inning. First Andrews and then Moreland. And the point is they've taken Justin Smoke back and now you manufacture you bring Goins it leaves Goins in the game to drop the bunt. Set up nicely for Toronto as you said Goins for a bunt and Revere their best contact hitter behind him. It'd be interesting to see how they try to use a bullpen because they got Dykeman up. You, you want him to pitch to Revere if you get to that point. And you have Dyson as well, but then you go to all the right handed hitters. Goins, 0 for 15 in the series, but he's made some tremendous defensive plays. Two on, nobody out. A seventh inning you'll never forget. He wants Beltre to feel this bunt. And that's all just to see if Goins is squaring around. Bucket foul, nothing at one. And you're right, Tom. The execution here is to push that ball to third base. Well, Texas did put the wheel play on. Beltrade charges hard, Andrews covers third. Yeah, but I could also run a fake wheel play here to try to get the pick off at second base. Now we'll get a runner from Martin. Dalton Pompey, the local native. A lot of saga. A lot of teams, once they show that wheel play with the shortstop vacating, they'll have the shortstop break early and move the second baseman in behind on a timed pickoff play. Pompey has to be careful not to leave too soon cheap. Even if they have a wheel play on, if you're going and you're the bunter. All you got to do is deaden that ball in front of home plate and still bunt it to third base and make them feel that after back to back errors I'd be surprised if they take a gamble to throw and try to get the lead runner. So Pompey takes his lead off second Pilar off first. They all want to go and bunt it. Beltre right. goes to third. Oh my gosh. Base is loaded. He dropped it. He ex took great execution. Look at Beltre, the spin, perfect throw, and Elvis just, Andrews just dropped it. He just dropped it. Three outs. Texas had all three outs in this inning in hand. They sit here with none, and the base is loaded. in the inning. Andrews has committed two. Ben Revere with the bases loaded. Infield in. One run game. Strike one. And that's where Revere's speed comes into play. Look, if you're, if you're Cole Hamels right here, you got to get a strikeout. Ben Revere puts the ball in play. It's a run. So this is where you're looking to get a strikeout, and then hopefully you can get the Donaldson maybe get through it. If you're Ben Revere, you got to just put the ball in play. Bounce to the right side. Throw comes home. Out at the plate is Pompey. 
You know you're not going to double him up. Now, Bannister's going to say he came out of the lane. He's looking for a double play on the slide from Pompey. And with all the catcher rules protecting the catcher, you're going to see the play. Jimenez comes up. He's got a force. But I think Pompey's in the right. You got to take him out. He's still on the plate. He's engaged to the plate. You got to take him out. I thought it was a clean play. He wants the umpires, Jeff Bannister does, to take a look at this play. It, it, it's a clean slide. If this was at second base, you want to be within being able to touch the base. He's within being able to touch the plate. And now the catcher becomes another infielder for me. It's a double play ball. I'm sorry. That's the dichotomy between how the middle infield and the plate are treated. Catcher has protection where he cannot be targeted. Middle infielders do not as long as that runner is within arm's length Woo. of the base. Can you imagine if they call a double play here? Woo! <laughs> a wild seventh inning. Go ahead run scores in the top half on a play that. Most people here at Rogers Center have never seen before. And now in the bottom half of the inning, three errors committed by the Texas Rangers. You know, again, we got two um, two former catchers managing. And looking at Gibbons' reaction in the dugout, I think he was kind of like, we may not get this call our direction. One more look from above. He's got to take him out. I think they're going to, this call is going to stay where it's at. And so are we. And I know you are at home. When we come back, bases loaded, one out, Donaldson to the plate. Okay, we have an explanation for that crazy play in the top of the inning. It is as Kenny Albert said. According to rule 603A, if the batter is standing in the batter's box and he or his bat is struck by the catcher's throw back to the pitcher and in the umpire's judgment there is no intent on the part of the batter to interfere with the pro, then the ball is alive and in play. Now, people wondering why was there a review there? There's an explanation for that as well. The umpires on the field called for a crew chief review of a rules check that was prior to the protest from John Gibbons. All right, thanks very much, Ken. Bases loaded, one out. Sam Dyson on to face Josh Donaldson. The right hander out of the Rangers' pen, ball one. And all the Rangers are doing right here, trying to look to get a double play ball. Yeah, it's going to be difficult for the middle infielders because Revere has a tremendous lead at first and will be on top of the middle infielders very quickly trying to turn two. of the moments that you look for if you're Josh Donaldson. You're sitting 2-0. It's the clincher. Texas has had a bad inning and they got to come to you right now. Three errors in the inning committed by the Rangers. And now time is called by the home plate umpire Dale Scott. Dale Scott's had a tough inning but he's got the calls right. He really has the slide right there and the ball off the bat. The two all, a bloop. Over the glove of Ardua. Pilar scores. And the Rangers get the out at second. 
Oh, yeah, they got the force a second, but that shows you how strong Donaldson is. But I don't know why Ordor didn't turn and run and get it. And that's all those balls that fooled you. Yeah, exactly so right. It fooled him. And Revere turns his back on the baseball, so he's not able to get to second base. Here's the ball directly over his head, backpedaling, but just beyond him, and recovers in time for the force at second base. But on Revere's point, he's got a huge lead. Where he's at right there, if Odor catches it, he's thinking I'm doubled up. That's why he's going back, because that's a ball you think he's going to catch. Oh, what next? <laughs> What an inning. We are tied at three. Dyson to Bautista. Are we tied? Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, what a game, huh? What an inning. The seventh inning to this point has taken 40 minutes. Incredible. Runners out the corners, two outs. If you look at the Rangers, they've had five outs in this inning already. Got the one at the plate, got the one at second. They've had six basically. They kicked three. And the scoreboard only says two. Donaldson driving in the tie run on a fielder's choice. After the Rangers took the lead in bizarre fashion in the top half. The one one from Tyson. Batista with a drive. Deep left field. No doubt about it. so long and it's going to burn you he knew it no doubt about it there's the drive by Bautista Three run shot. Second home run of the last two innings by the Blue Jays. Well, what, what, what in a crazy, crazy half. Batista's starting to heat up. He's missed some balls on the inside. He got the base hit earlier. Watch Russell Martin right here. Yes. It starts with this air right here. That's one out. Then here's the second out. The bad throw by Moreland. The short hop to Andrus can't handle it. Yeah, and then they get the bunt play. The right bunt play on. Get the throw. Planks it. And now you sit bases loaded with no outs. Three routine plays. That's Cole Hamels, the Rangers starter. Encarnacion, Palmer way back in the sixth inning. <laughs> way back, about an hour ago. Man alive. That tied the game at two. And then a seventh inning that we will never forget. Well, you got Encarnacion hit a home run. You got Donaldson with a bloop. And you got Bautista with a three run homer. When that happens for the Jays, that's hard to beat.
the three Jays who combined for 120 home runs and well over 300 runs batted in during the regular season. Jeff Bannister's Rangers won the first two games of this series here in Toronto. Blue Jays won the last two games when facing elimination something that Toronto had never done in the history of the franchise. And Carnacion on it first. The inning continues. Well, other than Bautista's home run, death by a thousand paper cuts. This offense here in the seventh inning. Man. I, I, I'm still, I don't think I've ever seen an inning like this. Never. Colabello, the eighth Blue Jay to bat here in the seventh. Base hit right field. And Carnacion to second. What, what an inning that the Blue Jays have had to come back from. Think about the emotional roller coaster they were on. Well, I think too about the emotional roller coaster of Dyson. You know, brought into this game as a sinker ball pitcher. We talked about defending the home run of the Blue Jays. It was the right choice. A guy who had not allowed a home run as a Ranger to a right handed batter. Well, Bautista changed that history. And the emotional roller coaster. Well, it's hit bottom right now for Dyson. Yeah, but he's got one more out to get. Got to get it. I tell you what, the, the Blue Jays, though, to fight back the way they did. The emotional roller coaster that Russell Martin went through. You throw a ball back, you'll never see that in a million throws back to the pitcher. Hits the bat and ricochets off. And the play was called correctly. And for them to come back and be able to put these points on the board and take the lead in this crazy half inning, this crazy inning, I should say. It's amazing. Sam Dyson. A former Blue Jay. Pitched the two games for Toronto back in 2012. Got into it with his former teammate Encarnacion earlier following the Bautista home run. Funny thing is he and Marcus Stroman played double A ball together and he actually taught Stroman his sinker. Wow. To Lewinsky 0 for 3. Two on two out. Higher ballpark, most of it, 90% of it, they're on their feet still. As crazy as this inning has been, they were one pitch away from getting out of it even after three errors. So you've got to give the Blue Jays some credit. You make that many mistakes and an opportunity for an offense to get going like this, you're going to get burned. But somebody had to deliver. They came up with some big hits to do it. He got lost, didn't he? A 3 1 for Dyson. Popped up. Foul territory. A 53 minute inning finally comes to an end. Finally, the eighth inning. Prince Fielder leads off for the Rangers, who now trail by three. Justin Smoke now at first base for the Jays. And behind the plate, Deanna Navarro. 
fielder. Fouls went off down the left field line. One and one. Following a 53 minute seventh inning. Bottom of the inning took 30. So Sanchez back on the mound after a long delay. We've seen the dugouts empty twice. One of the craziest plays you'll ever see in the top of the seventh and then that man Jose Bautista went deep off Sam Dyson giving the Jays a 6 3 lead and now fielder leads off the eighth with a base hit to left field. Well a tremendous day of postseason action continues next here on FS1 with another winner take all game five it's the Astros and the Royals with a trip to the ALCS on the line and then tomorrow game five from Dodger Stadium Benson Dodgers on TBS. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. Wow. This is the first ever winner take all game played here at Rogers Center. Blue Jays had an ALCS game seven against Kansas City back at 85 at Exhibition Stadium. For the Rangers it's their third winner take all game in a series. They split the previous two. Oh, don't forget too chances to clinch series in the postseason Texas franchise four and eight. And they were three routine plays away from being six, six outs away from the ALCS. They committed three errors in the bottom of the seventh inning. Beltre up the middle, diving stop by Goins, Tulowitzki the turn, and the throw gets away from Smoke. Tulo does that spin a lot. What a play by Goins. The difference with Tulo spinning and the play you saw in New York with Tejada and Utley is you got Prince Fielder running. So watch Tulo get this. He knows who's running, and by the time he gets his feet turned around, he's not going to get hit. Boy, another beautiful play by Goins. Such great first step quickness, the range. Turn a hit into an out. A lot of folks talk about he deserves a gold glove at second base in the American League. We've seen a lot of it. He's flashing the, the leather. Watch Tulo here when he pirouettes. He's he's set. Prince isn't even in the picture. So now Beltre on it first with one out. Moreland, 0 for 13 in the series. You know how big that play was. We're looking at first and second, no outs, and you're going to a couple guys that got some thunder coming up in Moreland and Josh Hamilton as potential tying runs. Now Sanchez, the sinker ball pitcher, one pitch away from getting off the field. Some prime crew is not liked too well here tonight, but they've made the calls right. Well, remember too, no left-handed reliever available for Toronto. Moreland in the box, Josh Hamilton on deck. Here's David Price. Brett Cecil to his right, injured earlier in the series. We were thinking Brett Cecil was the guy that got tossed, so clearly he was not the player that got tossed out. He's enjoying the scene. The calf muscle kept him on, he got hurt on a ground ball, on a rundown actually, as he was defending. We are told it was Mark Burley who was ejected for coming out on the field because he is not on the Postseason roster. He's come out three times, and so they kicked him out. The 3 1 to Moreland. Missing away, first and second for the Rangers with one out here in the eighth. Today's telecast is sponsored by the Quesarito and Volcano Quesarito big boxes. Grab them at Taco Bell. By Cricket Wireless, something to smile about. 
and by Insurance, the official sponsor of Major League Baseball. John Gibbons out to the mound. Closing time comes early. That will be all for Aaron Sanchez, 20 year old Roberto Osuna. 20 saves during the regular season comes on with one out in the eighth. Our Geico in game box score for the Texas Rangers who had a 2 0 lead in this game. They led 3 2. Shinsu Chu with a homer in the third inning. Two hits for Odor. Two on, one out. Potential tying run at the plate as the 20 year old Osuna gets set to face Hamilton, who he struck out in game two. This is most dangerous pitch right here, though. That first pitch to Josh Hamilton threw him a breaking ball. If that was a fastball, he was coming out of his shoes. Now that was the slider. His best pitch to neutralize lefties. A great changeup. Hamilton doubled his last time up. Fell off to the right side. Nothing in two. Osuna, one of his 20 saves this season. Of at least five outs. A six out save back in June in Tampa. That was his first career save. Look, I like the move. You go with your guy right here. He's the best you got coming out of that pin. Go get it, big boy. It's yours. The 0 2 to Hamilton High, one ball, two strikes. John Gibbons had no choice. We talked about no left handed relievers, and Sanchez had faced four left handed hitters in this game, retired only one of them. Osuna with Andrew Sondek, Osuna, the youngest player in Major League Baseball. Born in 1995. This kid's got a loose arm bringing it. This is the time of year. I mean, if this was back, Mariano Rivera, you think he isn't coming in right now? Mm -hmm. Shut this down for your club. You go get your guy. Two show fastballs. See if he goes back soft right here. The 2 2 to Hamilton. He got a piece of it. I think he's doing him a favor right there, throwing a 90 mile an hour changeup. When you're throwing 97 and you come back and your changeup's 90. Yeah, that's the slider yeah. there. He hasn't shown him the changeup yet. Yeah, a little bit of a slider. And I think he wanted to backdoor that one and actually leaked over the plate. For a tough game, Dell Scott's been on his game. This ball's away. It's a good call, no call. Down. Great take by Josh Hamilton. Payoff pitch from Oshuri. Got him. That was beautiful. Here it is. Power against power. Let's go back and take a look at how he was able to put away Josh Hamilton right there. The young man comes in out of the out of the pin. He gets a little slider right there. Comes back with another breaking ball right here. You, you, you're wasting pitches up and away. Another one up. And then he's going to come back with this slider right there. Fastball down. That's the one he wanted it. And then he said here it is. I'm coming after you. Power against power. Let's reach back and go get it. Wow. Osuna strikes out Hamilton for the second time in this series. Here's Andrews with two outs. He's 0 for 2 against Osuna in the ALDS. It gives away nothing. In a game that has gone absolutely haywire. People losing emotions. 
Game now in the hands of a 20 year old kid. Looks like he's playing ball on a Saturday morning. Looking to become the second youngest pitcher in baseball history to record a postseason save. Don Gullett was 19 when he recorded a save back in 1970. Every pitch with a purpose. And this is the other part about having Russell, having Navarro in the game now, guiding him through the two catchers that have caught him most of the year, Russell Martin and now Navarro in the game, following their lead, never shaking off, going with what they feel that he should throw. A two one. Two balls, two strikes. Elvis Andrews at the plate, two outs, top of the eighth inning. Rangers took a 3 2 lead at the top of the seventh on a wild play, and then the Blue Jays would answer, playing the game under protest with four in the bottom of the seventh. The 2 2. Uh, that's a good conversation right here. A little break it up. We're going to change our signs. And that's exactly what this conversation is. It's not necessarily how do you feel, what do you want to throw. It's they're changing their signs. Gonna, a lot of times when you have a veteran player like an Adrian Beltre sitting out of second base for as long as he's been out there, you guard against the tipping of the side. Game five, Astros Royals up next. Well, if it's anything like this, they're in for a treat. Following their wild game four, the comeback by Kansas City down four runs in the eighth. On that bat by Elvis Andrews. I think you, you, you can't sit here and try to throw fastballs by him. You got to uh, mix in a wrinkle. That's the, I think that's the conversation. Elvis is having a great at bat, but seeing the same speed every pitch. The danger is, of course, the slider, if it's hung, it goes a long way. Seventh pitch of the at bat. Osuna wins the battle. We head to the bottom of the eighth in Toronto. Blue Jays by three. Deanna Navarro leads off for the Blue Jays. Bottom of the eighth inning. Against Jake Diekman making his fourth appearance of this series. Came over in the deal with Cole Hamels at the deadline from Philadelphia. Remember that pinch ran Dalton Pompey for Russell Martin. And that's how Navarro got in the game. You're keeping score at home. Blue Jays sent nine men to the plate in the seventh inning. They scored four runs on three hits and three Texas errors. Wow. I mean, that's 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 what hurts. Home runs are things like that. Errors are going to happen as part of the game, but man, those are the things you think about in the offseason. That will eat you up. The first three Blue Jays reached on errors in the seventh. Two committed. By Elvis Andrews, who struck out to end the top half of the eighth inning as well. Boy. But Batista's blow made them pay. They're still close to wiggling out. And I'm telling you, that was one of the all time playoff. I'm going to watch my bomb. Center field, Stubbs. One out. You talk about ice water in the veins of Osuna. What an unbelievable pitch. He did go to the slider and executed perfectly off the black.
That's that's a lot of excitement from John Gibbons right there. That's as much as you'll get from John Gibbons. John Gibbons is one cool <laughs> customer. Man. He really is. He is one cool cat. John Gibbons, who last participated in a postseason series in the major leagues in 1986 when he was the bullpen catcher for the New York Mets. What happened in 86? Game six was a fairly wild game. They won World it all. Series. Now while all that was going on, that crazy inning in 86, what was John Gibbons doing? He was catching Dwight Gooden in the bullpen. With horses wow. in the bullpen at Shea Stadium with him, protecting people from going on the field in the event of Boston winning. So Dwight was popping the mitt in the bullpen, and every time he popped the mitt, the horses would jump. <laughs> so John that Gibbons. That was not an easy bullpen session. John Gibbons, in a way, a, a part of that inning and the seventh inning in this game. As Pilar flies out to Stubbs, two away. Well, T-Mobile wants fans to share their passion, be part of the biggest seventh inning stretch. Post your photos and videos with hashtag the big seventh and hashtag contest for a chance to win tickets to World Series Game Four. Tell you guys, before the game, we were asking Jeff Bannister, "What do you need for Cole today?" And what was his answer? We get. Four runs, we're good. They had their defense in. Goins fouls out to Andrews to end the inning. We head to the ninth in game five. Odor, Jimenez, Stubbs, two up for Texas. Game five, American League Division Series. We head to the ninth. Blue Jays with four runs in the bottom of the seventh to take the lead. And now Roberto Osuna, who struck out Hamilton and Andrews to end the eighth, will try and close things out. Jason Rudin, Odor leading off for the Rangers. Here in the top of the ninth inning, he has two hits today. And this kid has been incredible, too. Talking about Osuna, the, the series that Odor has had. Amazing. Two teams in the history of the division series out of 29 have lost the first two games at home and come back to win the series. The 2001 Yankees over Oakland, the 2012 Giants over the Reds. Cole Hamill started the game for Texas. One and two on Odor. Yeah, Odor's got to think smaller here now. Gave himself one big swing. Now it's survival time. Rangers trail by three. Mike Napoli in the on deck circle to pinch it. Today's Bank of America play of the game. We take you back to the bottom of the seventh inning. Jose Bautista, his second home run of this series, broke up for the tie game. Gave the Blue Jays a 6-3 advantage. That was just dirty. That's one of the nastiest bat flips you'll ever see. It almost looked like he was staring into the camera. <laughs> he stood there, take a picture, then flipped it. Wow. That's the baseball equivalent in basketball. It's posterizing your opponent. He made line. Wow. <laughs> Over 49,000 on their feet here in Toronto. A 1 2 from Osuna. Fouled off to the left side. You know how great a hitter this kid's going to be? He is just, he doesn't even know what he's doing yet. As far as setting up guys, being able to see through the league and everything. He's just letting it rip his hand eye coordination when he really starts to put it all together. We're looking at a a guy that's going to hit 25 homers and hit about 320 330. Caught by Collins for out number one. Took a little off of this. Got him out in front. That's why you heard that funny sound. Sounds like he broke the bat. Got him to reach on something. I got him on the changeup. 
And Mr. Defense today has been Ryan Goins. He can pick it. So Osuna has retired all three batters he has faced. Mike Napoli. The pinch hit for Jimenez. The Blue Jays have not won a postseason game at home since October of 93. You may have heard about Joe Carter. They lost the first two of this series here at Rogers Center and then won two games down at Arlington, Texas. One and one. Keeps looking at his finger there. I'm wondering if he's got a development of blister. Or He, the ball's flying off his fingers. 97 every pitch. Two and one. I'm wondering if he's got a pulse. <laughs> so he keeps yeah, looking he at, at it thing. again. Yeah. yeah. I'm telling you, that's that's not good. A 2 1. And Napoli drives this one into the left field corner. Foul ball. Well, I thought that was fair. Wow. Napoli's saying, I think it's fair. Call made by the left field umpire, Alfonso Marquez. Foul ball. Foul. There's not foul. much room down there, but it found the foul territory. Tell you, you got to give credit where credit's due. This this umpiring crew for the five games we've had them have been really good. They've been good on the plate, on the bases, and some controversial calls today. They nailed them without the review. Well, I like the way they've worked together as a team, getting together. No egos in the way. Get it right, job one. They've done that, and had to keep the peace on three brawls in this series. Keeps looking at that finger. He's just gutting through it right now, but he's throwing it all to change up the slider. 96 97 on a fastball. Texas Rangers down to their final out. Will Venable to pinch hit. Three wins for the Jays during the regular season. He gets this final out, the roof is going to blow off this place. My goodness. A one one. Just reaching back straight cheddar. Here it is. I'm bringing it. There were no camera phones back in 93. Uh -uh. <laughs> Off the plate. There was no Roberto Osuna back in 
tell you, man, I, I got to give Dale Scott some props. You know how tough that is not to call that pitch right there? Backdoor slider off the plate. Tell you what, the Rangers didn't die though. Every at bat this half inning. Odor's at bat was a good at bat. Napoli just missed the double down the line. So did Odor down the right field line. Venables battled three two, getting good swings. It made it work. Eighth pitch of the at bat to Venable. The Blue Jays are heading to the American League Championship Series. With a three run home run in the bottom of the seventh inning to send the Blue Jays to their first ALCS since 1993. A wild game. It took three hours, 37 minutes, including a 43 minute inning and then a 53 minute seventh inning that will go down in baseball history. I, know, I have seen postseason games with beanball wars. I've seen postseason games with a fight in the bullpen in Fenway Park. I've seen a brawl between the Yankees and the Red Sox, but I've never seen the kind of raw emotion of the game like we saw it today. As the Blue Jays celebrate, down to the field, Ken. Jose, Jose. Joe Carter once hit a really big home run here. You know all about it. That's right. I'm sure you've dreamed of hitting a home run like that. What was that feeling like at that moment? Obviously, that home run was different as a walk up and it was in the World Series. And I can only hope that I get that same opportunity. But right now, we moved on. That that was a, obviously a good, a good result to that at bat. I was looking for something up. I know he throws hard and a lot of sinkers. Um, so on the first one down, I just said, see it up, and I put a great swing on it, and it felt great. I'm still enjoying it. On the scale of all the games you've ever played, where did this one rank in intensity? Uh, intensity and, and emotion, it's, it's the most uh, emotionally charged game that I've ever played. So many mood swings, uh, you know, we took the lead and we lost it, and all the stuff that was going on, bottom line is we came out on top, and we got to enjoy the victory and move on. Now, you had an epic bat flip. Was that the emotion of the moment of what had happened in the top half just taking over? It's just the whole game, you know. It's a big game. It's a do-or-die game uh, on a tie series. When it, you know, obviously advances. Uh, I don't mean any disrespect whenever I do anything like that, and I certainly didn't plan it. It was just the moment. I felt it, and I did it, and um, I'm just glad I was able to help out the team in that moment. Jose, thank you very much. Thank you. Kenny, back to you. Thanks very much, Ken. Jose Bautista who once played for four teams in a season is the hero and then Osuna closes things out for the Jays. Just an incredible game. The intensity and the controversy. You're never going to see another game like this. 
Uh, this was a team that completely remade itself late in the year to be playoff caliber with trades. But today, you saw some homegrown players rise in the big moments. Ryan Goins with great plays at second base and treating the end of the game to Aaron Sanchez and Roberto Osuna. Youngsters who grew up a lot in game five. The Blue Jays continue to celebrate as they move on to the ALCS. Russell Martin, who has had more postseason at bats than any other Canadian born baseball player in Major League history, is with Ken. Russell, this isn't just Toronto's team. This isn't just Toronto's team, this is Canada's team. You, of course, are Canadian. What was it like to win in front of this crowd? I mean, you, you can hear it right now. I can barely hear you. You're standing right next to me. Unbelievable feeling. I mean, unbelievable energy from the fans. This is, un this is awesome. I mean, words can't describe the feelings that are inside me right now. That crazy play in the top of the seventh when Odor scored the run. How did you see it? You know, I, I really didn't see, I didn't see his hand out there. I just, you know, caught the ball, right, throw it back very casually, and it hit his bat. And then next thing you know, run scores. Uh, it's never happened in my life before. So um, I don't really know what the rule is and, and, and all that stuff. He was in the box. I mean, it's just uh, one of those moments. And uh, it created, you know, an opportunity for us to do something special. Jose, the hero. My, uh, my college teammate picking me up right there. Unbelievable, man. How much did that moment energize the team? How much did things change for you? I mean, you can either, there's two, there's two ways you can go about it. You can feel sorry for yourself or you can just go ahead and try and do something about it. And, and we just, we did something about it. They made a couple mistakes and we capitalized on that. And that's pretty much the game. Russell, congratulations. Thank you very much. Kenny, back to you. All right, thanks very much, Ken. All right, Dickey celebrating his first trip to the postseason. What a game, what a series for Harold and Tom and Ken, our entire crew. This is Kenny coming up after this break. We'll send it to our studio in Los Angeles for more post-game coverage.